All right. Hi, Betty. All right, we are live. Hi, Dan. All right, um, we are going to get started here. So uh, we have about 60 people that are signed up for it. It is also on YouTube Live, but I know some people couldn't make it and they watch it um, afterwards. So I'm just going to get going so we can stay on time. Um, I'm going to mute everyone so uh, everyone kind of knows how it works. If you have a uh, question, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, ask your question. I do try to monitor the chat, but I'm not real good at that yet. Um, I have the window open, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to pay attention to it, to be honest with you. I try, but it doesn't always work that way. Um, so on that note, I'm going to mute and hopefully mute everyone here. Where's my mute button? Everyone, that's the chat. Mute. The English are four brutal days that coincide with Salesforce's dream I thought I'd be able to mute everyone. Oh, participants. And... There we go. We got it. Okay. So let's get started here in my series on the Apple iWork apps. Uh, this particular class is going to be on pages, uh, using pages as your word processor and page layout. Um, so like I mentioned, I am doing this on YouTube. I did invite everyone, even if they're not a member, I do that periodically. Um, it seems to pull in more people that can help support what I'm doing here. So I have to give my brief introdu introduction. So for you people that know me, which most of you do, go get a cup of coffee, beer, something, you know, because um, you all know me. Uh, I am Dan Wasink, owner, trainer, everything for Dan's tutorials. Uh, I have over 30 years of publishing. Most of that is in magazine, although I, I think I could probably safely say now it really is half and half, online publishing and internet pub, um, and magazine publishing. So uh, I also am a former Apple genius, worked at an Apple store for about three years, and uh, then started developing apps, and you can't develop your own apps and work at Apple. Um, pretty common place for any company, work on your own stuff, um, so they would come that would claim it as there. So I had to quit Apple and then I moved into the education market. And uh, I also uh, do help out at a local school tech support, although I am reducing my hours for those of you that know that I'm doing this. Um, I'm going to help them out with their database stuff and their uh, website stuff, but their day-to-day -day operation, I'm just gonna become a substitute when one of the tech people um, need to be out for vacation or sick or whatever, they can call me. Um, Cause I need to focus on this a little bit more um, as things are going, you know, growing. Uh, this was always the plan, so this is a good thing. Um, so uh, I'll be doing a little bit less of that and hopefully a little bit more of this, uh, which is what I really want to do. So that's a little bit about me. If you like what you see here, uh, check out my site, danstutorials.com. Um, I am, it's just a, a simple little site where I create tutorials. And if you like it, you are really helping out a small business. It is just me and my wife. So uh, any little thing that you can do, if you like um, it, uh, it, it does directly help, help me out. So that's me. Let's get to going while, why you are here. So today what we're going to look at is pages. Pages is a word processing like word, uh, Microsoft word. And it also, uh, is a page layout much like, uh, for those of you in the publishing industry, like InDesign or Quark Express, or even the old page maker, you can really use pages for either one of those. And I'll explain the difference between the two when we go through this. So what we're going to look at here is, oh, I should pin my screen here. Sorry. I'm going to pin my screen. So it's a little bigger for everybody. Um, spotlight. All right, there we go. Um, what we're going to be looking at here is uh, the interface. I'm just going to show you the interface, and I'm going to show you on the three different devices, the Mac, iPad, and iPhone. Primarily, I'm going to look at it on the Mac, um, but I will show you how it works on the iPad and iPhone. Pretty much everything, I'm thinking, everything that I'm going to talk to you about, you can do on each device. So we're not going to be looking at any feature-specific or a device 
specific uh, features for this. Um, what we are going to be looking at is uh, page layout versus word processing documents, how we can start out with a template and how we can even save a document as a template. So let's say you create the same thing over and over, like what I do with a newsletter. I basically save that newsletter as a, as a template and then I can just reuse that over and over and over. Um, we're gonna look at how we can add objects such as shapes and text, how we format those objects. This includes shapes, text, charts, as well as um, tables, like a, a numbers document. Uh, we have can text wrap uh, text around these different objects. And then we're gonna look at how we can export a document as a Microsoft Word document. Pretty simple, uh, but there was something that was requested when I announced this class. And um, we're also gonna look at how we can export it out as a PDF if you wanna do that. And then we're going to look at something that Apple added new this year, I think it was this year, or maybe it was late last year, but mail merges. This was something that was in the original pages uh, from over 10 years ago, and then they took it out. And uh, 10 years later, this is truly one of those finally features, something that they had in there, they took out and you had to use Apple Script. It got a little tricky. I created a tutorial on it, but um, it, it did get a little tricky. And now it's built back in two pages and it's available on the Mac, iPad, and iPhone. So that's kind of what we're going to be looking at. Uh, if you have any questions, I do, like I mentioned earlier, I have my, my chat open here. Um, if you have a question, uh, I'm going to ask, can you put a cue in front of your question? So then it kind of flags it as, as a question. Um, also, you can unmute yourself and um, you know, try to keep it pertained to the, to the topic. And depending on how much time we have, we'll also have a Q&A at the end. I'm going to roll through this pretty quick because Pages is very powerful. I am not going, I'm not going to be covering every topic that Pages can do, but hopefully what this will do is get you comfortable and get you going with Pages and you can kind of see where it goes from there. So let's first look at the interface two pages. Now we're going to look at this on the Mac, iPad, and iPhone. Because basically, even though things are going to move around on the different devices, the whole idea with, with their interfaces, with all of the iWork act apps actually, Numbers, Pages, and Keynote, they all kind of work the same way. Once you learn one, you'll see that you can easily pick it up on the iPhone, on the iPad, and they all kind of work the same. So when you go and format a slide, or a tables and, and numbers, or a text box in, in pages. It's pretty much all the same. So let's look at this on the Mac first. And like I said, I'm just going to kind of run through it so we have a little familiarity with pages. So I have pages down here. And what I'm going to do is just open up a new document. We'll get into this template here shortly, but let's just open up a... Um, we're going to go with... You can see we have a lot of templates. Let's go with the uh, today's news, so newsletter here. This is a page layout type document. Again, doesn't really matter what type of document. So when we're looking at pages here, basically what we have here on the left is we have our different pages. So you can see that this has two different pages in it. If I had a report that had five pages, these are what we call thumbnails. And what you can do is you can hide this by going up to view here and you can select what you want to see. To the right of that, we have our zoom. So I'm able to zoom in and out. I can also pinch. I have a trackpad on a MacBook Air, but I am able to pinch. But you can go over here to zoom. If you want to add a page, this is where you can go and add a page. It's a little different for a word processing document. Again, I'll touch on that. Over here, where we add our different objects. So I have my insert for a uh, page break. I can add a table. I can add a chart. I can add text, shapes, media, which are pictures or movies. And then if I want to collaborate, I'm not going to touch on collaborate, but you can collaborate with other people. What we are going to look at extensively is format and document. And this is going to be over on the far right. So if I select something here, what I'm able to do is go over here to format and I can format it. I can change the color. I can change the font, um, the letting, the kerning. Or what I'm able to do is change the style or what I can do is arrange it. So basically this little area here, style, text, and arrange are what, what I would call submenus for the format. And it applies to anything that I select. I select an image. Now you're gonna see that I can format the image. 
I select text. Now I'm formatting the text. So all, it all depends on what you are selecting and what you get over here. But basically all you have to remember is you go to format and then that's where you go and format it. And then over to the right, we have our document. With document, this is more of the document settings, what the page size is. So you're not looking at a specific object. These are all called objects. An image is an object. Text is an object. A table is an object. All that is objects. When we're looking at our document, for the most part, what we're looking at is our document settings. So we have our format, which is for our, I guess, lack of better, uh, better uh, way of saying it is this could be all of our different blocks. I can format it, and then the document allows me to format the actual document. So here I can add a header and footer. That's how much space is above the document and below the document. We always want to have a little bit of a header. Like when you print something, it doesn't bleed off the edge of the printer. Every printer has a little bit of a, a, probably a quarter inch. They don't print all the way to the edge of the printer. So you always want to have, like this has a half an inch bleed all the way around it. And you can go and change that. And then this is where the mail merge is, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So that's basically all there is to it. And you could open up a numbers document, a keynote document, or a pages document, and it's going to look pretty much the same. You know, there's going to be obviously some differences, but, you know, you have your zoom settings, your thumbnail settings on the left. You have your blocks over here. And then you have your formatting and document settings over to the far right. We can get at a lot of the same information up in the menu bar, but for the most part, what I do is I just use these images or these um, toolbar, the toolbars over here. Let's see what this looks like on the iPad so you can kind of see how it all comes together. So I'm looking at my iPad here, and everyone can hear me, right? I usually ask that, but we're, we're good? Okay. Um, when I go into pages here, I'm going to go to Documents, and we're going to open up that same document. We can see we have the same templates in here. So here it is, Today's News. It's opening it up. And up in the upper left-hand corner, we have my view options. Much like what we have on the Mac, I have my view options here. So upper left and both the iPad and the iPhone. Now this is a drop down menu, but for, you know, it basically does the same thing. I can get my page thumbnails, the word count, the ruler. To the right of that, I can see my table of contents. And then we have our undo and redo. We do have an undo and redo in the, uh, in the iPad toolbar. Over to the right, we have my paintbrush. This paintbrush is our formatting. So when we go back over to my Mac, I have my Formatting options, well, when we go to the iPad, we have my formatting options. So anything that I select here, I'm selecting text, I go to format, I'm able to format the text. I'm able to style it, I'm able to arrange it, again, just like the, uh, the Mac. If I select an image, you're going to see that it changes. I can style the image, and now you're going to see I have formatting options for the image and I can arrange the image. So again, we're just kind of following that same pattern. But when we go back over to the Mac, you're going to see all these little text blocks that I can add. Where are those? Well, on the iPad and on the iPhone, you'll see shortly, what you do is you go to the plus. So when you tap on the plus, this is where I can go and add what I need to add. So here are my tables, charts, shapes, and media. On the Mac, table, Charts, shape, media, text. Where's text? If I go back to the iPad, I do not have text in here. Table, charts, shapes, media. Text is under shapes. You're going to see I have text here. So just, you know, I don't know why they did that. Maybe to save space, although these are icons. You'd think they'd have enough room in there. But um, for some odd reason, they moved text under the shape. So that is one key difference um, between the iPad and the iPhone. It's the same thing on the iPhone and the Mac version. So where are our document settings? Our document settings are under the three dots here. And this is where I can export. This is also where I have a little bit of the menu bar on the Mac. If I wanted to export something, which we'll get into, I go up under File, 
and I go over to export and I can export it as a PDF, that kind of thing. Well, on the iPad, this is kind of like a combination. It's my menu. This is where I can find and document set up and mail merge and set a password. I have my settings here. So it's kind of like the menu that we have on the Mac along with our document setup. So the document setup, which is that last icon on a Mac, this is where I can go and set my headers and footers and I have more options. And I can go and drag and drop, you know, change my, my headers and all that. And once I get done, I tap on done and it applies the changes. You may be wondering what this last icon here, I still get confused on this one because I would think that this last one here, I'm going to move my mouse and it's just above it there. That is if for read only. I think I keep thinking it should be the document setup like what we have on the Mac. If we go to the Mac, you're going to see that that icon there looks like a document. And then when we go to the iPad, that icon there looks like a document. So I got confused on it. it what, what is this? It's not doing what I want it to do because I'm used to it on the Mac, muscle memory. Well, basically what this does is this just puts it into read only. So now I can't make any changes to it accidentally. So when you open up a document in Pages, a lot of times what I see is it opens up. I don't know what the reasoning is, but it opens up in Edit. I haven't figured out what the, why it would do that sometimes and sometimes not. But basically all you have to do is just click on it. You can see the toolbar changes, and now what you're able to do is just go and edit it. One last thing, what you can do on the iPad with iPad OS 16. Here's a little treat for you. On the Mac, you've always been able to edit the toolbar. You can do this in a Finder window. You can do this in Numbers windows, Mac windows, um, uh, Pages, Keynote. All you have to do is just drag what you want up there, and you can drag what you don't want. I think it's been there since Mac OS X 1, Panther or whatever it was. Um, well, now on the iPad, with iPad OS 16, what we are able to do is customize the toolbar. Where is it? Okay, so I know you can do it. Let's control click. No? All right. Well, that's you will be able to do that. Um, on my other iPad, it does do that. You can customize that toolbar. Uh, but we're going to skip over that. Let's take a look at that on the iPhone, the interface. So when I open up Pages here, we're going to go to that same document. So I just tap on the plus, choose from a template. I swipe up, and here it is, today's classic newsletter. Just opening it up. And across the top, I get my cursor here. You're going to see that we have this little arrow pointing to the left. This is what is called a carrot. When I tap on the carrot, it brings me back to all of my documents. So now I'm able to open up another document as an example. I have my undo. When I select text, I have the paintbrush, which allows me to format it. Down at the bottom, I have my style, and I have my arrange. And when I swipe up, I have more options. So again, we have a lot of the same options. When I tap on the image, I go to the paintbrush, and there's my image styling options. So you can see it pretty much works the same way, coming up from the bottom as opposed to the top, but that's just because it's the iPhone. I want to add a shape. I want to add a chart. Maybe I want to add text. I tap on the plus, and you're going to see I have my numbers, my um, tables, charts, shapes, and media. And where is text? Text is under shapes. And let's see, we don't want to go to my shapes. I want to go to basic. We have different menus up here. There's my text. So again, we do have all the same options. I go over to the three dots. And here are all my different options for the document, much like what I have on the iPad. So there's my export. Here's where my document setup is. I tap on that, and then I can change. Let's go, oops, I don't want to do that. 
Swipe up. It's not letting me swipe up there. There it goes. So there's all the, just couldn't get it, get it quite right. But um, that's where all the information is for changing your document. So basically the interface is similar across all the devices. The Mac, we have a little bit more, you know, we have the text button and then the iPad, they pare it down just a little bit because of the space. And then the iPad or the iPhone, they just scrunch it up even more. But for the most part, everything is there across all the different devices. Um, with the iPhone, we do not have, at least from what I could tell, we do not have where we can see the table of contents unless it's under the navigator. It might be that, that it, right? Is that it right there? Navigator. There. So when I tap on the bottom there, I can see the thumbnail. So again, you just kind of have to hunt and peck, but it's there. So that's the interface to Keynote. Now... Let's take a look at the difference between a page layout document and a word processing document. This is a pretty big um, deal when you're coming when you're working on a document because they uh, it's the fundamental how a document is built is fundamentally different when you're doing a page layout type document to a word processing document. So you want to get it right, and you can convert between the two different types of documents. But what it will, um, if you if it's a complicated document, mm, it's not a good idea to do that. So you really want to start out in the beginning with the right type of document. So what is the difference between the two documents? And I'm just going to show you on the Mac, but you can really do this on the iPad and iPhone as well. But it's just going to be easier to show you on the Mac. So when we're looking at the Mac here, I'm just going to close a document, and we're going to go to the template chooser. So when we're looking at this, we have our different types of documents. So an essay, what this essay is, is a word processing type document. When I look at the one that I opened up earlier, the classic newsletter, that is a page layout type document. So the difference between them is, I guess uh, one way of putting it is, think of the old days when we were on a typewriter and we're typing our letter or we're typing our resume or we're typing a story and we want to run out of room, what do we do? We put another page in because that paragraph just keeps running off. We're just adding more text, so we're just adding more paper. That is what a word processing type document is. The more we type, the more pages are added. It's added automatically. So when I go to a letter here, this is page layout, as you can see, page layout documents generally do not have a lot of graphics in them because uh, it's hard to lay them out when you're doing a page layout, when you're doing word processing. When you go and add more text or change the size of the text, all of a sudden it can mess up the images. So generally speaking, if it's a graphic intensive, like a flyer, you want to use a page layout. If it's like for a resume, you're writing a story, you're writing a letter, then you use a page layout. So this is a page layout type document, and what I'm going to do is just go and start type. That's here. I should have copied a paragraph here. Let's go to the web, and I'm going to copy a paragraph so I don't have to type. You do not want to see me type. I am not a, uh, some of you know, have heard me say I'm not a good typist at all. I'm learning to use dictation, in fact. So I have this paragraph here. You're going to see that the paragraph was so long that it automatically added a new page. And I'm going to go in here, and we're going to add it again. Now it added another page. When I go to my thumbnails, you're going to see it's more pages. Let's go and add it again. So it's adding those pages automatically. I take out text. It deletes those pages. So again, think of those typewriter or a book or anything like that. The more stuff you add, it'll just add the pages. I add an image to this, and we'll talk about text wrap shortly, but when I add an image to this, I'm just going to drag and drop. The text flows around that image. So where does that other text go? It adds another page. So it's a fluid document is basically what you're looking at here. 
It can grow, it can shrink based on what you have in there. With a page layout type document, we're going to go to a page layout type document, that is more fixed. So let's take a look at where to go? Today's news. This is a fixed document. So I have this text here. I still have that same text that I have in the clipboard. Well, when I go and paste this in here, remember on a word processing document, it added a new page. Watch what happens here. It didn't add a new page. What it basically did is it just cut that text off. So now what I need to do is make a bigger text box because everything fits into boxes. You can see I have that little square there. So everything is fitting into that box. And as I make that box bigger, and you can see it's overflowing, it is adding that text because that text is in that box, but it's not gonna make the document any larger. So these are really good for, like I say, um, newsletters uh, and uh, graphic intensive documents where word processing documents are really good for uh, reports, things like that. When we look at our templates, Apple does not designate the difference between a page layout and a word processing document. But I can tell visually which ones are page layout. First of all, anything that is landscape is not going to be page layout. I'm sorry, is not going to be word processing. Anything that is portrait in Apple's world can be either one. So when I look at any one of these, I know that this one is not a word processing document. I know that this one is not a word processing document because it's landscape. That's basically what I have found out. But I also know that this one is not a word processing document because it's graphic intensive. So you're going to see that for the most part, these are all page layout. These are all word processing. So when you're creating your document, what you have to decide is what type of a document is it going to be, or what is it, what is, is it going to be just a single page where you might um, just go and put uh, you know, images on there with a little bit of text highlighting some things within well, a perfect, perfect example for a page layout. Oh, this is going to be a resume or a report. I'm not sure how long it's going to be. I'm going to have paragraphs of text. Perfect for word processing not graphic intensive. So let's see how you can convert one to the other. You can convert one to the other. So I'm gonna go and create a, um, or let's just open up this one here. This is a word processing type document. How do I know that? There's a few different ways to, to be able to tell, but probably the easiest way to tell is add page. With a word processing type document, I do not have an add page here. What I have to do is, you can see it's grayed out. I can't add a page to this. So how do I add a page? I either add text, and now I just added a page, or what I can do is I can add a page break. So I have my cursor right here. Let's put a paragraph in there. So I have my cursor right here. I'd like to have a page break there. What I do is I go up to insert, and you're going to see page break. And when I select that, now my cursor is there and my paragraph ends there. That's how we do that on a page, on a word processing type document. On a page layout type document, let's go back. There's my page layout. What I would do if I want to add a page is I click on add page and now I've just added a page to it. Another way of seeing how what type of document is, is you go up under File. This is how we convert one to the other. When I go to File here, you're going to see it says Convert to Word Processing. Okay, if I'm going to convert it to a word processing, that means that this must be a page layout document. So when I go over to the other one, this is a word processing document. So when I go up under File, what are we going to see? Convert to page layout, which tells me that this is a word processing. So you can convert them. So when I go and convert this to a page layout, 
You can see it messed everything up. It didn't prop. It didn't properly format it, and I can now click on Add Pages. So where did that text go? Why did it disappear? Well, I'm going to undo this. With a word processing document, everything is kept in the body. So we have a body in the document. This is the body here. I start typing. I create a new document blank. And you have my cursor here, which tells me that this is a word processing document. I'm just starting to type in the body. That's all I'm doing. I'm just adding more pages as I go. So anything that is in the body, when I go over to a page layout type document, we don't have a body because everything's in boxes. So if we don't have a body, all this text here that I typed in is going to be gone because it's in the body. So if you convert a word processing document to a page layout type document, copy the body first. This is just one giant, um, I go throw, there we go. This is, when I select all the text, I am selecting like all the text on all the pages. So now what I'm able to do is copy this and then I can convert it into not that you would do this, but it, I hope it's just trying to get you to understand the difference. This would be horrible if you did this. It's gone. My body's gone, but I have it in my clipboard. So now what I would do is I would add a text box, and I can paste it in there. But remember how long that was? I'd have to go all the way down, make it larger this way. Continue this text box on to the next page. Continue that text box on to the next page. Continue that text box on to the next page. So when you have a document that is going to have a lot of text like that, make sure it is a word processing document. And again, to do that, all you have to do is just make sure that this says convert to page layout. If I have to convert it to a page layout, that means that it is already a word processing. So now what I'm able to do is go in here, delete that. I have a body now because this is word processing. Boom. And oh, I didn't have a lot of text in there. And there, there it all is, ready to go. Does anyone have any questions on that's it's it's a key element when you're creating documents. So you really want to you want to get it right, and uh, because if you if you accidentally do one thing, and if you're creating a page layout type document with um, you know text boxes and things like that, it's so much easier to do than trying to do this in a word processing document. We've all done it with Microsoft Word. I want to create a flyer in Microsoft Word. It's a pain in the butt to do it in Microsoft Word because in past versions, all it was was a word processing document. So things went around and things just, you know, now what you're able to do is just make your boxes. So I could just go blank, make sure this is a page layout. All right, it's a page layout. So now what I'm able to do is say, I want to have a shape in here and we're going to put uh, an image in here. Let's go with this one. There it is. Oops, it looks like I had it a couple times. And just go like that. And now I want to have some text in here. There's my text. I want to have the text over here. As you can see with page layout, it's so much easier. I need to have this over here below that text. If you try to do that in a word processing type document, it's you're you're it's you're going to go crazy. So um, that's the difference between word processing and page layout. Um, is there a way to define the document type when you're just creating a? Not necessarily. I wish Apple had a way. Let's go ahead and delete these. Really, all you have to do is when you create a new document. Let's just go with, well, I would highly recommend using these templates if you can, because then all you have to do is just kind of change things. They got some nice looking templates in here. You swipe over to the left and you can see you have more. Um, so start with a template. That'll get you going. But if you just want to start blank, so I'm just going to start with, I don't know what type of a document this is. So basically what I would do, double click on it, and then go up under file, 
And this is telling me that this is a word processing document because I need to convert it over to page layout. On the iPad, let's go over to my iPad here and let's go and create a new blank one. What type of document is this? I have no idea. So what I do is I go up to the, I think it's the three dots here, and settings, that's not it. The iPad might not have the convert, but I'm, so I'm gonna show you the third way of converting a document, because I think this is what you have to do on the iPad. Yeah, it doesn't show it on there, okay. So let's go back over to my Mac. Remember how I said a word processing document has a body where a page layout type document does not? So this here is a word processor, word processing type document. When I go over to my document settings, you're going to see document body. So if I deselect this, what it's going to do is take that body out and it's going to convert it. So that's the third way. And as I said, basically that's the key difference. It has that, that document body. It's going to just remove that. So if you have anything in that document body, it's just going to remove that and you're going to end up with a blank page like I showed you earlier. So on the iPad, what you would do is go to your settings, which is the three dots, and I think it's under document setup document body, I would turn this off, and now it wants me to convert it. iPhone is basically the same way. I go to the three dots, go to my document settings, and then turn the document body off. And that's how you can tell, and if you open up the wrong one, but really what I would do is I would take a look at the templates, which is what the next slide is about, starting out with a template. I talked about this with uh, numbers last uh, in the last class, because the templates are a great a great starting point, especially if you want to kind of learn how everything works. Um, they have some pre-filled uh, text in there, and you can just kind of play around with it without having to worry about it. And you screw something up, all you have to do is just recreate it. So on the uh, iMac, all we have to do is just create a new document and you're gonna see we have all these different templates. We have the different categories here and I just tap on any one of them or click, double click on any one of them to open it up. So if I'm selling something, put it on the, uh, the old pole outside, right? There it is. And all I have to do is just click in here, change my prices, change my text, change my phone number, change my image, and it's all done. Templates are a great place to start playing around with this kind of stuff. Um, and also, they just, you know, it's Apple. It looks good. On the iPad, we have the same templates, the exact same templates. So basically, what I do is I go over to Documents in the upper left-hand corner. And when I click on the plus, I'm able to see all my templates. And we have all the different categories up here. The iPhone, same thing. I go to the arrow in the upper left-hand corner. And then I click on the plus. Choose a template. And there's all my templates. So we have the exact same templates across all the same, across the different devices. If you want to save your document as a template, you can do that as well. So let's say you create this awesome document that you want to use over and over. Maybe you created your own flyer with your own colors and you just like, I really like this and I just want to reuse this over and over. You send out a newsletter, a family newsletter, anything like that. And now what you want to do is you want to reuse that over and over. Well, you can save any document as a template and then it's going to show up in the template chooser here. You're going to see I have my templates. So this is where I can find all of my templates, my awesome documents. That's not really not that awesome, but 
can get the idea. So how did I do this? Well, let's go over to this museum brochure. I really like the look of this, um, but maybe I change the font. I can select it, and we're going to go with Helvetica. Nobody uses Helvetica anymore. Let's just go with Den, you know, and we're going to make that a little bit larger. And, you know, change a couple things in there. And now, yep, that's what I want. That's what I want as my template. So all you have to do is just go up under File, and what you're going to see is Save as Template. Now, when you select this, you basically have two options. You can add it to the Template Chooser, which is what I would recommend, because then it's just going to be in your Template Chooser. Or you can just save it to anywhere on your, um, on your hard drive, on your computer. So I like to save it to the Template Chooser. And now, you're going to see it's down here. I'm going to say, My Awesome brochure. So now what I'm able to do is double click on this and it's my based off of any changes that I made. And the beauty of it is when I go over to my iPad or iPhone you're going to see that it's down there under my templates. Now, let's say I make some other changes to this. I need to, you know, maybe I want to have two or three different versions of it. I'm on my iPad. How can I do this on the iPad? How can I save this as a template on the iPad? Basically, go to your three dots. I believe it's under Export, and you're going to see Pages Template. And now I just, uh, let's go add it to my Template Chooser. And there it is. I want to rename it. Control click on it. I do have a key, keyboard for my iPad. You can long press on it as well. And now I can just go and rename it. And again, being that I'm using iCloud for everything, let's go over to my iPhone. What you're going to see is both of those templates are there. So now I can kind of choose which one I want to use or which one, you know, that, um, which one I want to create a document from as a base. So templates are, are a great way to play around with documents. You don't have to worry about um, what text you have to put in there or anything like that. You can, you know, see how things go because basically with all of this, and we're going to talk about this next, objects, with all of these different objects here, what I'm able to do is move them around. I can resize them. I can group them together. So I have this one selected and this one selected. I want to group those together. Now they're one group. So there's a lot of um, things that you can do with these. So it's, it's fun just to kind of play around with these and get a, get a familiarity with how it all works without having to experiment on your own document. And then once you get comfortable with it, then what you can do is try it on your own document without having to break your document. On that, before we go over to objects, what I do a lot of times is I will, and it kind of gets me into trouble every once in a while, I will duplicate a document before I go and make changes to it because I don't want, I like where it is, but I'm going to make some drastic changes to it. So now what I want to do is I want to make changes to a, to, a doc, to a duplicate of it so I don't mess up the original in case I don't like it. So all of a sudden I have, you know, I want to have two or three or four different versions. Where I get into trouble is I have two or three or four different versions. Um, but basically if you wanted to do that, all you have to do is just go up under File. Let's say I like this one, but I want to make some changes to it, but I don't want to make changes to this one just in case I don't like what I'm going to do to it, if that makes sense. Um, what you do is you go to Duplicate. And this is basically what I do with my keynote presentations for all these classes. I look at last week's or last, you know, the last class, and I duplicate it, and then I make changes to it. So now we can see that this is Untitled 4. So now what I can do is I can call it whatever it is, and I have two different documents here. So there's the original, and there's the new one. So now, let's say, uh, well, I like this, but let's go and see what else I can do to it, but I don't want to do it to this document. Duplicate. 
And now you're going to see it says whatever I typed there, copy. And I can go and rename it. So now I have three different documents there, all of the same thing. So just to go and duplicate it. On the iPad, let's go and open up a document. And what I, there it is. There's my edit. I can't make any changes to this because this is black. So I have to tap on edit. Now I can make changes to it. There's that uh, little thing that I run into every once in a while. Um, so what I would like to do is duplicate this. Well, in order to duplicate this, what I have to do is go back over to my documents. It's a little bit different. And if I control click, I can duplicate it. Or if you long press on it. So again, I have a trackpad, but if I long press on it, I'm just going to hold my finger on it. I have duplicate. Again, I am running iPadOS 16, which should be out in the next month, but I believe that this works the exact same way on iPadOS 15. So if not, you will be able to do this. They are really bringing the iPad up to the Mac standards um, in a lot of cases. So uh, that's one of them. You can see I have a nice little drop-down menu, and I can move, copy, share it, get info on it, rename it, duplicate it, that kind of thing. iPhone basically works the same way. And when I look, when I create documents, typically what I will do is I will create them on the Mac, and I have now started to create them on the iPad because really the iPad, the pages on the iPad is really pretty good. On the phone, I don't necessarily create the document, but I may make changes to it. So I, even though I could, but it's such a small screen, I generally don't do that. All right, let's take a look at adding objects. So when we add objects, and I touched on this, we're just going to create a new document here. Let's get rid of these here. A new blank document, so you can kind of see how it works. I kind of touched on this, but basically to add a document, what we do, or to add an object, all these are different objects. Basically what we do is, make sure I got my notes here. Basically what we do is we just go and insert a table, and what this will do is give us a numbers table. You're not actually opening up numbers. Everything is contained within pages. So when I click on this, or I can go and check, let's add a little bit of color to it. Click on this. There is my table. Now what I'm able to do is go in here and add data. So this is like a numbers table built within pages. I can go and format it. You're going to see when I go up under format, I can style the table. I can style cells. I can style the text. I can I have different headers and footers. So it's just like any type of a spreadsheet type table. So if you're used to numbers, this is going to look very familiar to you. If I want to move it around, this is just an object to move a table around, just like you do in numbers. What you do is you go to the little circle here, and you can just drag that around. Add rows and add cells, rows, columns. Click on the little thing there, and you can go and add them. I'm not going to get into the intricacies of a table, but that's basically how you add it. On the iPad, we'll start out with a new document here, um, select items. Okay. So that table can be a riff, you know, with data using yep. numbers data. Okay, thanks. Well, it, yeah, it doesn't link to a numbers document. I know you asked that but, question. Yeah, yeah, but but it, you can put numbers data oh, yeah. in it. Okay. Oh, yeah, yep, and it's, if I go four, four, three, I'm getting real creative here, five. And if I wanted to add... We're not seeing what you're doing. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, so I just added some numbers in there. And now what I want to do is add a footer row. It doesn't have any, so let's go and add a footer row. So there it is. And I want this to be the sum of all those. Insert equation. No, that's not it. So where is it? automatic well I know what I can do is this equals and there's all there's all my formulas what I can do so I just you know I can just do this this is typically how I would do it 
and now you can see it's a sum. So basically, you just put the equal sign in there like you do in a numbers or even Excel, as uh, you know, that's how it works in Excel too. And then you can add formulas and all that kind of stuff. So, yep. Um, Thanks on, for doing that. Mm -hmm. On the iPad, I'll just show you on the, how it works on the iPad. Um, yeah, you're looking at my iPad. Plus, table. And there it is. And again, I can just go in here. And if I want to format it, being that I have a cell selected, I can format the cell. If I had the table selected, I can format the table. So it basically works the same way. On the iPhone, it works the same way. Let's take a look at how you add charts. Charts works a little, it works basically the same way, but um, you know, it's you can't, well, let's just show you. So I'm going to tap on the plus. We go over to charts. I'm just going to go with a simple 2D chart. There it is. So where is it, where is it getting its data from? Well, what you have to do is when you click on it, what you're going to see, where to go? When you long press on it, you edit the data little sheet comes up and now what you're able to do is just go and edit the data so I can change you know my data in here I can add more columns to it I can add more rows to it once I'm done I tap on done and then the chart will mimic all of that data so you, you, I'm gonna say you probably can't get as intricate and you're not gonna do that anyway in a pages document you know like with um, with numbers or Excel I mean you can you can build a pretty comprehensive chart these are, I dare say, more basic, like if you're um, building a business plan or whatever, I just need to add some data in here to show what I, my projected growth is, you know, that kind of thing. Um, Edit data in here, and then you can go and change that. Um, so there, I'd say it's more basic charts, but once you add that chart, what you are able to do is go up under Format, and you can change the style, the data, how it's arranged, um, chart type. Let's make it a 2D line, a 2D stacked. We can even make it a 3D area. And I can drag this around to get the best look. You know, but we want to hide that it's going down back there. So let's 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 do that. You know. So you can easily format charts as well. And you can just move them around. I want to edit the data. I go and edit the data. That's how it works on the iPhone as well. On the Mac. I go to my chart, I'm just going to stick with the simple, and then you're going to see edit chart data. So it's a little bit easier on the Mac. I don't have to long press, not that that's a big deal. I have a separate window that opens up, and now I can go and change this. So if I go region 3, watch what happens to the chart. 33. You can see I'm just adding those. I could add another region to it, and it'll just add it to there. Close it, and there's my new chart. And when I select it, I can go over under Format, and what I'm able to do is change the chart type. I can add a shadow. I can change the colors, change the font. I have my axis settings, my series settings. So just like any other chart, I can change all of that information or how it looks and, you know, add different tick marks in there, things like that. So that's how charts work. Now let's take a look at text. Text is pretty basic. Just click in there and what it does is it adds a text box. Even if I was in a word processing document, you can add text boxes to a word processing type document. Remember how we have a body here? This is the body. I'm in a word processing type document but I also have a text box. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, maybe what you want to do is have an image in here and you want to add a caption to it. Well, you can do that. It's text wrapping. I'll talk about that shortly. But basically what you're able to do is create text boxes within a word processing type document. Just be aware that things can move around. So if I were to go and add more text in here, um, you're going to see, all I'm doing is pasting. It's just, it's adding more, 
it's just now it's separating the caption from the image there. So you just got to be a little careful with word processing type documents. Um, what you can do is group these together, though. So you can group different objects together. And uh, I'll go on that after we talk about shapes and media. So let's talk about shapes and media. With shapes, let's say I wanted to add a square. Pretty simple. Just go and add the square. And now what I'm able to do is format it. And I can change the color. I can change the fill. I can change the border. Add a shadow to it. Add a reflection to it. I can double click in here and add text to it. So we can put text inside of a shape. And again, what we can do is just change all the information in there. With shapes, we do have all kinds of different shapes in here, including what I would call clip art. So if you wanted to have, you know, my wife likes, uh, I put this in one of my lessons, giraffe. My wife likes, so let's say I was creating something with her in a giraffe. Well, giraffes aren't that color, so I go to style. I'm just going to make it orange. Well, let's add a little bit of a border to it. Well, that's a little thick. So we can just go bring it down here a little bit. And let's put a shadow on it. And now I've just uh, created a little giraffe there with a little shadow. So we do have all kinds of shapes in here. And in fact, with shapes, what we're able to do is actually create our own shapes. So I'm just going to show you how you do this. I, I have a couple of lessons on my site with this. But when I go to shape here, we're just going to go to basic. Well, let's go with apple. So I have my apple here. Now, I want to put a bite in there like the Apple logo. So basically what I would do is I would add another shape. And this is basic. And I go to a circle. And the bite looks like that. So those two shapes there are together. What we're able to do is, where is it? You'd think I would know advanced. Create shape style. What we're able to do is, oops, I just saved that shape. We're able to combine those shapes and we can exclude, um, oh, I know where it's at. Select them both. We go up under Arrange. And you're going to see I have here Unite. Basically, unites those into one shape. I have Intersect, Subtract, and Exclude. So basically what I do, I'm not sure which one I need. That's not the one I want. Okay. How about subtract? Ah, there it is. Now I just took a bite out of that apple. And this is my shape. Now what I'm able to do is save this so I can you know, copy and paste it and put it into other things. And on the iPad, we have that same thing. I can go to the plus here. I go to my shapes. This is where text is, but I just go and add my shape. Let's go and delete that. And I would add another shape. And I want to combine these, so I tap on both. So now they're both selected. I go to Arrange, and I can combine them. And now that is my one shape. This is a page layout type. There it goes. So I can move that around. iPhone basically works the same way. Um, media. Let's take a look at media. Media is basically your movies, movies. Um, Images, music, you can even put audio in there. Um, you can take a photo, scan documents. So we're just going to take a look at just basic stuff here. Uh, we'll go with, I'm going to go with a different image here. We're going to go with this image here. So I have that image there. This is down in Florida. And what I'd like to do is uh, make this smaller. Well, with images, we just go to the corner. I'm not holding anything here. You can see my hand in front of the camera. Um, it does keep it in proportion, so you don't have to worry about changing the perspective. We can crop it, so I double click on it, and you're going to see I have these little tools here. And now what I'm able to do is, I just want that building there, and let's make it portrait. And now I just made that portrait. We can also go up under image here, and I can adjust the exposure, the saturation. So we do have a few different options enhance it 
um, I can replace the image. So let's say I have this image just in the right spot, but really that's not the right image. But I like the box, you know, where it's at. This is a page layout type document. I don't want to change. I don't want, if I add a different size image in there, it's going to move things around. Well, when you replace it, it keeps the same box in there, and, but it replaces the image. But now this image isn't quite right. Again, I don't want to change that box because I have text flowing around it. If you double click on it, I can change the masking on it. I can even make this larger. Let's go and zoom in here. And now that's what I want. Or double, oops, not double click on it. Click on it, replace. Let's go with this one here. These are tulips down in Holland. I need to reframe it. I can just double click on it and reframe it. We do the same thing. I'm going to show you on the iPad. You can imagine it'll work the same way on the, on the iPhone. Photo or video. And we'll go with my photo here. There it is. I have the dots here so I can and it keeps it in perspective so I'm not holding the key usually you have to hold a key to keep it in perspective sorry if I'm getting anyone dizzy um, if I go up under the format and go to arrange I'm sorry go to image what I'm able to do is replace it so I can replace it with another image I can edit the mask this is where I go and do that little trick got that image there behind it let's delete that and now let's just go and replace it. That's not the right image, but I like the size of it, the, the proportion, so let's go to replace. We're gonna choose this photo here. And there it is. I didn't change the shape or anything like that, but it just put a different image in there. I double click on it and I can move it around to remask it. Let's look at grouping. I mentioned that we could group these together. So. I have on my Mac here this caption and when I move my photo what I would like that caption to move with it so I need to group these together so and you can group different objects together so this is text and an image so I just click on it and then I also click on I'm holding down the shift key click on both of them so now they're both selected and if I hold down the control key you're gonna see group I can also do this under a range so I go to group and now you can see that it's grouping them together. iPad, same thing. We're going to go and add some text. Where do I add text on the iPad? Under Shapes, Text. I have my text here. We're going to put it over here to the left, right at the top there. I select both, Control click, Group, and now it's all grouped together. So that's uh, basically how, how objects work. Just think of each object as a separate thing, but the beauty of it is no matter what type of object it is, if you want to format it, you just go up under Format, and depending on what you have selected, you're going to see different options here. Now, being that this is grouped, I can't change the image. Well, actually, I could. I think you have double, you double click on it, and now I can change the image. So we don't have to ungroup something you know, I want to replace this image. I can't replace that image. How do I do that? Double click on it. Now I can go to image, replace, and even though it's grouped, I'm still able to replace and format it and all that. I want to format the text. I double click on it. I can change the text. Now I can format it as well. So that is, I actually got ahead of myself there. So I'm going to have to figure this out with the chapters. But basically, that is how you format, um, format your text or format your blocks. So I'm going to go back, just recap so I know it's easy on my chapters when I add the chapters to the video. Um, click on it. We go over to Format. Depending on what you have selected, you're going to see your different options here. So if I go to my shape, I can format the shape. If I go to my 
image, I can format the image. Again, this is grouped, so I can't format that image. I double click on it. Now I just have the image selected and I'm able to format that image. You can see it like, kind of like lifts it up there. That's just a different style that Apple added to it. Picture frame. I can go and change it to a different thing if I wanted to, or let's go with this one here. Even though the text was not there. Um, iPad and iPhone. Basically, same thing. I have my text selected here. Double tap. Now my image is selected, and when I go up to Format, I can go and style that image. We can put the same kind of thing on it. iPhone will basically work the same way. I want to change the text. Double-click on it. It's highlighted. I can start typing on the keyboard, or what I can do is go to Format and format the text. If I had a chart in there, basically the same thing. I select the chart, and then I'm able to format it. I select the table, I'm able to format the table. All right, let's look at text wrapping. This is, um, with text wrapping, you're going to see that uh, when I was moving things around, you know, things were kind of moving around, and that can get annoying if you don't understand what's, what's going on, especially if you're trying to add captions and things like that. So text wrapping is really not that um, hard to understand once you grasp where the, where the different options are to change it. So, let's open up a new document on my Mac. And I'm just going to show you on the Mac. Basically, you'll you understand how it works on the iPad and iPhone. You'll just go to a range. You'll see that shortly. So, we're going to go with this report here. And what I'm going to do is add a shape in here. When I add a shape, the text wrapped around it. So what you can do then is put an image right there in the corner, and let's make that a little bit larger. You could do this with, yeah, let's do that with an image. So I put my image in here. You can see it wrapped around it. So now what I need to do is make that a little bit smaller. And let's go, there we go, there. Now we have a nice, this thing could be about that flower, and uh, it's, it's all, looks good, and it wraps right around it. The way, the way that text wrapping works is we go over to our format, and we do the same thing on the iPad if we had it selected, or the iPhone, and we go over to Arrange, and what you're going to see is text wrap. Now, basically, there's a few different options here. I'm going to go back to the round one, something that's not so square. Actually, we could go, we're going to go a little extra. Let's go with an arrow, and we're going to make this. What you're going to see here is that text is actually wrapping around that arrow. So it's able to read the shape where the transparency part is there. So it's able to read that. So as I move it around, if you don't want it to do that, you don't have to have it do that. You're going to see that it's set to automatic. Let's say I just wanted to have it go above and below. Now it's just going above and below it. Or... I don't want it to wrap around it per se. I want it to be in line with the text. So now, as I add more text here, if I were to type in more text, this is uh, lorem ipsum, but that arrow would move down because it's actually a text object in Paige's eyes. It's just another piece of text. So if I go and add more text, what is it gonna do? It's gonna move that arrow down because it's in line with the text. So if you're talking about something, you're writing a report and you're talking about something and that paragraph is specific to that thing, what you may want to do is put it in line with the text. So if you go and add more text, that object stays with that paragraph. That's basically what it does. You can have none. This is where you could add something in the background. So you can see that it's covering that. Well, if I go up under Format, change the opacity. Now it's just kind of in the background there, but it's still just a shape. You can move it to the back, you can move it to the front. This is under a range, and what I'm able to do is, oh, that's in the, there it is, top left, not aligning. 
Oh, send to the back, send to the front. I don't have any other objects, so I can't. It's just one, one, one layer here. But when you send something to the back and front, think of a deck of cards. What you're doing is you're moving that card to the back. So instead of it being on top of the text, what it might do is be behind the text. Um, and that might help you out with when you do these little tricks like this. Um, text wrapping. We're going to go back over there. What you can also have it do is move with the text. So if I move the text, this will also move the, with the text. It's not in line. It doesn't treat it as text. It's a little tricky there. But for the most part, if I go and add more text, this will move along with it. If you want it to stay in the page, let's say I wanted to have this arrow always right up here to the top. What I would do is I would say stay on page. And now if I go and add more text in here, that arrow is not going to move. So it's kind of combining the page layout with the word processing. So this is where you can do a little bit of a hybrid between page layout and word processing. You can make objects, and you can do this with any object. You can do this with a text box. But what you are able to do is make that stay on a certain spot on the page. So that's how text wrapping works. Basically, we just go up under a range, and we can move it with the text. Or we can wrap it around it. Or we can have it above and below it. Or automatic. And I don't know how it determines what automatic is, but if it's not doing something you like, just go up under here and then you can go and change it. So, iPad basically would work the same way. What I would do is I would go up under Format, we go over to Arrange, and then if I had anything selected, I'd be able to wrap text around it. The text wrapping options would show up here. iPhone, same thing. All right, got two more slides here. And... What we're going to look at next is exporting as a Microsoft Word. This goes pretty quick because it's pretty simple, but I'm also going to show you how you can export it out as different types of documents. To do that, on the Mac, let's say I wanted to export this out as a Word document. I'm going to open this up in Microsoft Word. And it works pretty good. If it's a complicated document, you will probably have to make some changes to it. If you're using some funky fonts, you're going to probably have to make some changes to it but it'll get you 90, 95% there. All you have to do to export a document that you created in Pages to open it up in Microsoft Word is just go up under File, and what you're going to see, oh, Steve likes funky fonts. You go to Export, and then we go over to Word. When we export it as a Word document, I can export it as docx, which is the newer style. If you're using an older version of Word, you can also just do it as a doc file. Now let's say you didn't want to re ex export, that's basically it, it'll open up in Word. Like I said, pretty simple. If you wanted to save it as a PDF, you can switch over and even though I said I wanted to export this out as a Word, you can just go and change it to whatever you want. EPUB, this will open up in the Books app. So if you're writing a book, you could easily open this up in the Books app. My newsletters that I create, my recaps, this is exactly what I do. And you can also export this out and actually publish this in the bookstore, the Apple um, bookstore that they have. Uh, let's see, I think is it under here? Reflowable and flip fixed layout, that's where, um, is it going to be fluid? If you change the font size in the Books app, is it going to add more pages? Or is it not going to? Is it going to be more fixed? So if it's a word processing type document, you would go reflowable. If it's not, then you would try fixed. It does create a copy of it, obviously. So what you can do, and I've done, I can't tell you how many times I've exported my recaps out to get it to where, where I want. I try it out and I'm like, oh, that didn't work out right. Make a change, export it out again. So you're not messing around with the original document. On the iPad, the way that we would do that is we'd go up to the More button here, and you're going to see Export, and we have Word. I share it. That's how, that's how it works as you share it, and I save it to Files, and then that document will be saved as a Word document. The iPhone, same kind of thing. Let's go and open up this one here, and 
go to three dots, I go to export, I go to Word, Mail merge fields, which we're going to talk about next, are not. That's all right. That was a mail merge document that I created. I can hit continue. And then I just save it to my files app. And it'll save it in the files app. I would save it to iCloud. So then I can access it on my Mac. And it's just a Word document. So that's how you export it out. Pretty simple. And you can do it on any one of your devices. So now let's wrap it up with mail merges because this is a, this was a pretty big deal um, I do have lessons on mail the new way of doing mail merges so just search for mail merger go to my pages um, go to my pages tutorial and you'll see you'll see how this works so I'm just going to give you a, a quick rundown of how it works because it's actually not that difficult all right so I am on my Mac and we're going to go with a letter, classic letter here. So I have this classic letter. The header up here is my information. So on every letter, I want that to be the same. This is going to be the sender, so this is going to be my address. You can already tell it put my address in there. But this information is going to be changed depending on you know the mail merge. And we can mail merge from a numbers document or we can mail merge from our contacts. I'm going to show you how it works on the contacts, but it's pretty simple on numbers as well. So basically what we need to do is we first need to define what the fields are. So any town, this is an address. So what this is the sender's address. What I have to do is go over to document and we do the same thing on the iPad and iPhone. I go to my document and then you're going to see mail merge. Now, if you do not see this, this means that you have an older version of Pages. Like I said, this is recent, recently new. Is that how you would say that? Newly recent. Uh, mail merge. And basically what we have here now is anything that is green is my information. So this is not going to change. I could print out 100 letters. It's going to have that same exact information on it. But on the other who it's going to, if I had 100 contacts, I want this to be individually addressed. So these are the purple. So I have here the full name. There it is. That's the full name. I have here address. There it is, the address. This is a first name. Double click. You're going to see it's first name. Now let's say I wanted to have it say not uh, dear first name. Maybe I wanted to say um, their last name, dear with the last name. You can double click on this. Actually, let's go over here. Where is it it's supposed to change? There we go. So I control click on it. Sorry. This is where you say, uh, this is why I, I, I say sometimes you just have to experiment. So I control click on it. And now I can go and change to last name. And what it'll do is it'll pull the last name instead of the first name. And from here, all I do is just click on merge. I can see who it's mapping to. This is from my contacts. I can preview it. And there's all the information. I can go through each one of these. There's a first letter. There's a second letter. There's a third letter. There's a fourth letter. And I can see what it's going to do. And once I click close and click on merge, it's going to create this big, long document. If I had 100 contacts, I would have 100 pages. And then I could print it to my printer, and it just address each one of those. Like I say, you, you, it's, it's actually not that difficult to do. So if I go um, deer here, let's say I wanted this to be a field. This Right now this is text. So what I would like to do is make that a field. So I would go deer. And now I can go and change that to a merge field. Well, what do I want it to be? Well, let's go with the job title. Now what that is going to do is pull the job title from my contacts when I merge it. Basically all we have to do is just double click on it and we can go and change it to what, whatever we want. On the iPad and iPhone, it basically works the same way. I would go to Mail Merge. Now this document is not a Mail Merge type document, but Mail Merge. 
because I don't have anything in here. It won't let me. But um, you can see it kind of steps you through it, and it works basically the same way. You, well, here, let's just do it real quick. So we're going to go with a classic. We'll go with a professional letter this time. So let's open up that professional letter, hopefully. There it is. And I go up, mail merge. There everything is. So this is my information. This here is the sender's information. Where is it getting its information from? Well, when I click on merge, I can select contact. So that's me. I can select from a list. I can select from a spreadsheet. If I had all my information in a spreadsheet, I'd be able to do that. And then I just map the uh, columns and rows. And then I can get a preview of it. And there's all the information ready to go. And then all I have to do is just click on Merge. It's much easier to do um, than what it was using Apple Script. That's how you had to do it before. And with Apple Script, you could only do it on the Mac. Now you can do it on even on the iPhone. You can do this. Um, I know I brushed through that relatively quick because it's getting you know, about an hour and twenty minutes in here. Um, but if you want to learn more about that, you can just go just go over to my pages document. I have a couple of videos on how this all works with real data, and then you can actually see how it goes, and I show you how you change the fields and all that kind of stuff. So that is basically um, you know the the basics of pages. It's a powerful program. Um, I absolutely love it, and um, I, I you know Word might be able to do more in some things, but um, you know. I think for most of us, pages will do just fine, just kind of like numbers. Excel will do more. Um, as uh, Chris asked me in an email, will numbers, can you link up different numbers documents to other numbers documents? No, you can't, but in Excel, you can. So Excel will do more. But I think for most people, not for everyone, but for most people, uh, pages will be a, a great substitute for what uh, what word is and I think once you get the gist of it you're going to be far less frustrated um, Microsoft Word can get pretty frustrating as we all know uh, and pages uh, just looks more pleasing you're going to be able to create some uh, I think better looking documents um, and uh, yeah that's basically uh, how you can get started with with pages and it really comes down to what type of document you have your different objects text charts, shapes, tables, you format them, place them around, you can group them together, and then you can export it out, or you can do a mail merge. And that, you know, when you break it down to this most simplistic uh, steps, that's basically all there is to creating a pages document. So, any questions? Maybe Dan can do an advanced session on pages. I could. I do have a publishing background. Um, how do you print envelopes? Um, envelopes, let's go over to my Mac. And I go to new template. Guess what templates we have? Where is it? We have business cards. We have envelopes. Double click on it. I need to do a merge. Merge. There it is. Kind of all set up for you. It's a great place to try and try and see how merge works. Um, because it's going to pull the information. So I would just go and merge. I'm going to go with my contacts. And I have a list with addresses. So there it is. I have six records. I have addresses. Let's go and preview it. Yeah, all that looks good. So now I close it. And I go to merge. And basically it's going to take that information. And there are my envelopes. So you're going to see Dan Wasink. Return address is all the same, exactly what we want. But Abigail Appleseed, Apple, Apple Inc., Beth, myself, and Tim Cook, who lives on Cook Boulevard. I should have called it Chef Boulevard. Um, but, yeah, that's basically how you would I'd put my envelopes in the, uh, in the printer, and it's ready to go. So... 
Um, I think you missed my question. Well, sorry about pages and iCloud. You're using pages, numbers, keynote on the web. Okay, so I, you're right. I did miss that. But um, basically with pages, you can use iCloud as well. So you can go to um, iCloud.com and... When you log in with your Apple ID, you are able to open these same documents up. So you could even do this on a PC <laughs> if you wanted to. Um, but you could do it. You just go to your uh, any browser um, and go to iCloud.com. And once you log in, you're going to be able to edit all of your documents right within, uh, right? You know, that's why I, I highly recommend save everything in iCloud. And then uh, you're able to get them on all your different devices, you know, no matter what you're on. So... How do you create a contacts list from a database such as FileMaker Pro, which is my full customer database? I love FileMaker Pro. Um, so what you'd have to do is export that out as a tab delimited or a CSV file um, from FileMaker. So you would uh, cre you know find the table that has the addresses and uh, find you know do a search for the addresses that you want to do, and then you can export that out and Probably what I would do, you don't want to add those to your contacts to mess up your contacts. So uh, dump them into a number spreadsheet. It's really pretty simple um, with a number spreadsheet. Again, I have a lesson on how to even do it with numbers as well. But um, basically, you're just going to have a column for your address, a column for your state, a column for your city, a column for your name. And then when you go to um, delete... When I go to merge and I go spreadsheet and I select my numbers document, what I'm able to do is say, this column here is the address. This column here is the, so you export it out. A few more steps, but that's just because FileMaker Pro is not necessarily consumer friendly. Um, so you kind of have to take a couple of extra steps there. So. Um, let's see here. Choosing new in pages, then from template, look for stage, oh yep. Exactly. Steve said that. Um, okay. I think that's it. We'll call this a wrap. An hour and a half. I'm getting better. I need, I really want to get these down to an hour, but there's just so much that these programs can do, that these apps can do, and I get excited about them. So you just kind of have to um, put up with my lengthy, because it's just a lot you can do with them. Um, so uh, any other questions? All right. Um, we're going to call that a wrap. Next week, uh, I'm going to have one of my AMAs. So that's just my typical AMAs. And then um, the following week, I never published my... I was going to do one on iMovie. And I never published it. So I didn't... I, it never... I, it, it was blank. So... What I'm asking, uh, does anyone have any any suggestions for a class? I mean, I could do it on iMovie, but I don't know how many people use iMovie, to be honest with you. Um, there's other utilities that I think are a little bit better, a little bit easier. Um, I mean, I could I could do it. I'd almost rather do it like iMovie on the iPad exclusively because they are they. It's not like Pages and Numbers where they're all the same. They um, iMovie on the Mac is different from iMovie on the iPad, and they both have their advantages. You can do more on the iPad and the iPhone than you can do on the, on the Mac in some cases. Actually, I think in some cases it's easier and uh, quicker. So I could do that, but does anyone have any anything that they'd like me to cover? Dan, uh, it's Michael. Quick question. Uh, mm -hmm. Just going back to Word, were you on the, uh, what versions were you using everything? I, I assume you're using iOS 16 were you using ios 15 for the ipad and uh and what version of the mac all right so i was using mac os um not ventura okay so uh, monterey is that what they're at yep yeah, monterey. The, yep i the was iPhone using was ipad os 16 and ipad os um, oh. ios 16 so i am using the beta versions of the ipad and iphone but i was not on the Computer, the computer is still using Monterey. Right. I'm not comfortable. Is my understanding the iPad is coming out in October? With, That's with what. Um, it's pretty buggy yet. I'll be honest with you. Uh, at least their stage manager really? is. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, I would say October, probably later in October. 
Um, that'd be that'd be my guess. I've not heard anything. They haven't, you know, I haven't heard anything about release candidates. Usually, they release to us a you know a release candidate. But um, if I were to open up Stage Manager, it'd be it, um, it crashes. I did that just the actually I just did that uh, for for somebody and it and it crashed. Um, so I, I don't think it's ready for prime time, and I don't think it will be ready for prime time for a few more weeks. So I'm going to say end of October, at least from my guesstimation. All right. Um, how about changing lock screens? Okay, so I, I thought of this. There's a lot of things out with iOS 16, but, um, you know, sometimes, you know, you want to wait a little bit and let everybody have it and let all the, um, you know, everyone comes out with their splashy stuff right away. Um, I'm still rolling out with my with my lessons, but I could uh, I could just do my favorite things with iOS 16. I think there's some great stuff in there. And um, what does everyone think of that? I, I think that'd be kind of fun, actually. So that would be great. Okay. I'll be, um, so this will be in two weeks. So next week is going to be a standard AMA, but the following week, and I'll put it up um, tonight or tomorrow, but the following week, what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, my favorite things with iOS 16, you know, there, there's a hundred different changes that they made to it. Okay. But what are some of my favorite things? Um, and I, what do I think that would help other people? So I shouldn't even say my favorite things. It's what do I think are the best things for everyone? So I'll just kind of go with that. So let's plan on that for my, um, in two weeks. Yeah. All right. Thank you everyone. And for Thanks. people that are not, uh, if you're still watching it, are you still with me, or if you watch it later on, um, and you like what you see, check out Dan's tutorials. Um, and, uh, if, uh, you know, become a member. You are helping out a small, small business. It's just me and my little, uh, little office here. And uh, it would be greatly appreciated. So thanks, everyone. And we'll see you next week. Well done. Thanks. Yeah, thanks again. A little mm -hmm. confusing, but I mean, understanding it. But I appreciated that you said play around with it. It's play like years ago. Play years around ago. with it when they mm -hmm. first came out with microwaves and I just tried all kinds of things and figured, okay, this will work. This doesn't. So right. again, you have, it's your mental thinking. Like I told you with numbers. Yeah. And really what you have to do, and I said this with the numbers thing too, is play with those templates. Cause then you're not doing anything on your own. You don't have to sit there and you it has content in there. You can just try, try different things with those templates and you don't have to worry about anything. And, and see, you, I, I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah. I never knew that. Mm -hmm. And Again, you see me fumbling around. Maybe that's my Microsoft. Around. Maybe that's my Microsoft. You know, background right. that that's so ingrained within me for so many years that it's like, <laughs> yep. again, mentally changing. Yep. And. You know, you see me fumble around with this. I'm like, I should be able to go here. Well, it's not there. Really, what it comes down to is control click. If you're on an iPad or an iPhone, if something's not working, try control click or left click mouse trackpad, whatever it is, um, or tap and hold. You know, and then I will fumble through the menus every once in a while looking for something. But really, that's, you know, what it comes down to. Um, it's just sometimes you have to hunt and peck and Apple will move stuff. <laughs> but, uh, you know. Like right now, I can't believe I can't change the, um, I can't customize this toolbar. I, on my other iPad, I can. So I don't know what uh, what they changed, but I know I can do it on the other one. Or maybe this, I maybe th am I updated to the latest version here? Of, that's good. Okay, now we're just kind of fumbling around. I'm going to stop recording here and stop broadcasting. Uh, to YouTube because we're just kind of fumbling around. Thanks, everyone. Boom.